here for former stands at the Flight Centre in Brisbane, joined alongside the PFL Flyweight uh, contender who is um, back in action in the middle of next month, June 13th, against the Korea Dejeva. Um, Chelsea Hackett, Chelsea, thank you for your time. We've spoken to you a lot of times in the past, first time in person. Yeah. Uh, it was an eye poke in that session. Yeah, yeah, as you can see. Uh, apart from the eye poke, um, off the back of your last fight, how was that? Yeah, no, like John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, life's been good. Obviously, my last fight didn't go how I planned or how I wanted it to go. But I think this tournament style saved me a little bit, like in the sense of not taking it too hard on myself um, and just like moving forward quickly and knowing that I had another matchup in eight weeks' time. It's definitely helped me just, you know, I was straight back in the gym, like straight off the flight, same day, straight in the gym. Um, I now have a new opponent and a new task ahead of me. So, yeah, look, the last fight, um, it, was just, it was just hard. Like, it happened so quickly, I almost, I was like, what just happened? Like, it was one of those fights where I couldn't show everything I've been working on, and um, that's definitely the plan for me to the next one. How was the preparation Obviously, not the fight you wanted, um, obviously. Uh, I guess, how was the preparation of that, that camp and everything? Were you happy with it? Yeah, no, I was really happy with my camp. It was probably my best one today. Um, I felt confident, I felt strong, I felt fit. Um, I was in like the best shape of my life, like the best weight cut. So, I, there was no excuses for, for what actually happened in the fight. Um, you know, I, tra I trained so much and there's so much aspects in the way that need to be covered in every camp. So, we cover everything here, my team. We had a strategy for Jenna. Um, I have no excuses. Like, we knew where her strengths were. Um, and I knew going into that fight, if it stayed on the feet, I would win. If it went to ground, she would win. Like, I, I, I said that to you. Like, I knew that she, uh, she's a world champion by world jiu-jitsu. So, um, I knew I was in trouble if it got to the ground. And it was just a shame that I, I started too late and I didn't, I didn't, you know, press her from the beginning. So that's something that was hard for me to swallow a little bit. Um, but apart from that, like, no excuses. My camp was great and this camp is just as good as my better. Um, since, uh, so you lost against Jenna, right? The last time you had lost was with the UFC. Mm. I feel like you've matured a hell of a lot since yeah. then. Um, and, and I imagine the way you would digest it, that loss and this one, yeah, it was definitely hard. Like, um, I, you know, had a few days after the fight where I was upset, I was emotional. But um, I think that's where, like, your family and your friends and your team come into it. Like, I have such a good support system that just picked me up, you know. And you're right, like, how I handled my contender series was just, like, worlds apart from this one. And I, it is, I'm, I'm getting older and I'm, I'm, I've got more experience now in the game. And, um, I, I'm kind of accepting that, like, you're not going to win everything. And life comes with losses, but don't look at them as losses, look at them as learning, as learning curve. So that's how I sort of bounced straight back from that last one was, it's just a learning experience. And if I can take what I've learned into this fight, it'll be a different story. What's up guys, it's, uh, it's Josh here for From The Stands and look I know you're in the middle uh, of a good little interview that we're currently doing but I want to take a second of your time just to give a quick little shout out to today's sponsor, uh, TrainAid, obviously they're, uh, they're big supporters of us like we are um, of them and today they're, uh, they're sponsoring this video um, and look I want, to, I want to let you guys know about a little product they do, their, their premium product, TrainAid Hydration. Um, it's the best hydration formula on the market guys, I'm not going not gonna to lie to you and look if you don't believe me, ask guys like Israel Adesanya. Alexander Volkanovsky, Leon Edwards, you ever heard of these guys? I mean, they're the top athletes in the world. Uh, and they're all taking Trainite Hydration. Um, it really is the number one formula um, in the world for hydration. And in, in the summer months here in Australia, I mean, it's something that uh, I think everyone should be taking. Um, and Trainite have, uh, have been very nice uh, to give us a discount code, a very healthy discount code as well. I mean, it's a nice little discount code. If you use the code FTS, 
15 at the checkout, um, they will give you 15% off. Um, we'll leave a link um, to their website in, in this uh, description of this video. And uh, yeah, check them out, guys. Please support them uh, because they are supporting us. Cheers. This is, I, I think, it's highly anticipated from our point of view, from your point of view. Um, I'm sure the world will know, you know what you bring from that fight with Dakota. Um, obviously, we've been talking about it since the end of last year, knowing that she was going to be in the tournament, you were going to be in the tournament. Um, it's, a, it's a big fight. Obviously, she's a great striking as do you. Um, when that name came across and was on to you, I, didn't, I was quite shocked when I saw it because I didn't think it would be happening now. Yeah. You never know with the way the sure. and the depending of brackets and those sorts of things where you can end up. Yeah. So that the fact that that fight was the next, I was like, wow, what yeah. a fight to come back on. Yeah. Um, a very high profile fight, co main event, and you, know, you got put on the prelim for the co main yeah. event, so it's high stakes. Um, what did you think and how did you feel when? I was so happy, and it's funny, like, you'll, you'll be the first to know how it happened. So, um, I was in the same boat coming off my box, I wasn't sure, like, obviously my, the Dakota fight was a dream for me, like, I, I wanted that fight, and for the past year I wanted that fight. Um, so coming off my loss to Jenna, I came home and I was like, I'm not going to get Dakota, she's number one. Like, the rankings came out, I'm number seven, I'm coming off a loss, she's number one, they're going to give us someone in the top three. So that was where my, my sort of um, headspace was at. But I still had a little bit, like I had this feeling, like this gut feeling, that it was still a possibility. And I, my manager raised, as you know, um, I got off a call, no, I was running in person actually. And um, he looked at me and he's like, okay, I, I've got, like, you've got two options. Like, PFL have actually given me two options. Um, and he had this like smirk on his face, and I knew straight away that one of them was Dakota, and I was like, Dakota was it? And he was like, so it's either Lisa, the girl that she be, or Dakota. Who do you want? And I'm like, that's not even a question. I'm taking Dakota. Like, and like, another thing that wasn't actually raised was the fight before, so my fight with Jenna, I was originally booked to fight Lisa. So she was my first opponent. Um, and then they obviously like switched the tournament around the matches around and then four weeks out they changed my opponent to Jenna. So I mean I'm not again I don't make excuses like I made a mistake in the fight but um I was prepared for Lisa and then he was completely different to Jenna. Um, so I prepared for Jenna on four weeks of this. Um, so then yeah coming into this fight when I was off with Lisa or the I was like I'm I'm taking the like I want to take that number one spot and this is my opportunity. Like, oh, that's my dream part. So if I, if I had knocked that back, I'll never, like, who knows, I'll never get that opportunity. What's that thought process like then? Because there's a situation there where you could take Lisa, who, in some respects, may be an easier fight. Mm -hmm. not, not easy, but an easier fight. Obviously, the code is ranked number one. The market behind the goals behind it is very evident. What's the mindset then of, of taking the fight now where, and really putting all your chips in? Because if you beat the quota, that is, that is, that's, it's honestly probably bigger than anything else apart from the title because yeah. you basically steal that momentum. Everyone yeah. knows who Chelsea is. Now. Yeah. You take all that momentum. Is that sort of what the mindset is going in as opposed to not taking that pot with us? Yeah, 100%. Like, honestly, it's not in me to take easier routes. Like, it never has been in my whole career. I, I was 12 years old and I fought a 40 year old woman. Like, I just, I don't care. Like, that's literally what happened. So, um, one, it's not me. So, if I did choose an easier option, I would never forgive myself. Like, I, I want to live with no regrets. And this is one of those moments where I'm given an opportunity and I'm going to take it. And yes, like, the plan is to take all of that life and all of that momentum and show the world who Chelsea Anthony is. Um, because I believe I can do that and I believe I'm at the top of this test today. So, um, yeah, it's not in me to take easier fights. And also, to be honest, like my back's a little short. But I'm in a position where I've just come off a loss. I'm on zero points. I might not make semis. Definitely, like, I'm very far away from the finals. But I will know if it's Dakota. In any way, we'll put, just put, like, that puts me as number one. 
like, so that's where my mind, my mindset is, is to me, I'm like, okay, well, I'm kind of at this stage where, like, took my language, but, like, fuck the point, it's like, I need a big decoder. Like, that's my number one. It's funny, like, yeah, definitely, like, it depends how you respond to pressure. And I think as I've gotten older, I've responded better to pressure. Um, at the start, I would feel it and I would just, like, it would almost, like, paralyze me a little bit. Um, but to be honest, when you compare my PFL debut pressure to this pressure, it's like I, I felt more in my debut with Kai just because I was a favourite. Like you said, all eyes were on me. Does she still have it? Like, I had such a long layoff. Um, so in that sense, more pressure with Kai. And I also think I'm such an underdog against Dakota that that is, like, fueling me in a different way. Like, the pre- it's not pressure because, like, everyone's expecting me to lose. And I love that. Like, it's been a long time since I've actually been the underdog, so I'm kind of, like, I love it and I'm thriving out of it. Um, so I'm, like... Like, I literally have nothing to lose, and that's how I'm going to it. Let me get that on a t-shirt. Uh, everyone's expecting you to lose, you have nothing to lose. Yes. That's exactly it. Literally. Um, yeah. What major adjustments then do you need to make for someone like the Yeah. She's, 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 she's extremely tall. Um, yeah. It's obviously range or something. Like that. Yeah. Uh, what, and if, if, if there are any major um, the biggest thing for this prep is I don't want to lower my like, OG training partner's back, Selena. Um, she's like pretty known on the local oh, yeah. scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. From Heartbreak, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I trained with Selena a few last few years and she's a, she's a beast. Yeah. And she, um, she'll definitely be back on the, in the fight scene soon. But I've got her back because she's the same height and the same range as Dakota. Um, she fights very similar, very strike, like kickboxing heavy. Um, so every week I'm doing rounds with Selena, sparring, wrestling, and that's just giving me that extra confidence knowing that the range and the height is really such a shock to me when I get there. So honestly that's a bit, been the biggest thing this year. All um, technicalities are the same, conditioning is the same, but um, just those like strategic aspects of okay, like how are we going to actually fight together. Um, for me personally, my, the last fight, because I was finding such a grappling heavy opponent, I had to change the way I thought quite a lot. Yeah. Um, people would have probably seen it, like, I was definitely more like, I was like, forward, I wasn't how I know I fight. Um, which was smart for Jenna, I just, it just didn't go my way. Um, but coming into the coma, I can actually like go back to my roots a little bit, which has like, yeah, it's just literally put it far away. It's like, I'm just like, this is me. This is how I want to fight. So, what advantages then do you think um, you can uh, bring into this fight with Dakota and defeat? Obviously, extensive Muay Thai background. She has a great strike program background as well. Um, what avenues have you seen from her fights? Obviously, you know, what the edge you want to take on those fights? Yeah. What, you as well? um, what have you seen that, that you think you might be able to do? The biggest thing with Dakota is her, the level of competition she has had in front of that haven't known how to deal with her strength. And that's like something I think you, that she's going to have to deal with is I can deal with her strength, you know, we deal with her strength. It, you know, it's been new to her opponents, but it's not new to me. So, um, yeah, like things like she uses her range really well. She's got long punches, long kicks. She stays quite straight. Um, so biggest thing to me is like, it's fun, it sounds funny, but like, I would have done that. But like stylistically, you know, like I know that I don't have the reach that she's got, so I'm gonna have to do it and get on the inside. 
Um, but that's everything we've been working on, and I think another big thing is like my speed. Like, I'm pretty fast, so like I think it's going to be like set aside plans and strategies. Um, I think it's going to be like a part of the night, part of the year situation. Like I honestly think. I don't expect her to back down. I'm not going to back down. Um, I think it's we're both going to go back to our roots a little bit. But um, also, like I'm a, I'm a wrestler too. Like I, I love my wrestling, um, and that's something I want to bring back as well. That's wonderful. Uh, that is a job you can't do. Uh, don't quite want that. Um, how do you get the job done? And, and do what no one's been able to do. Look, I just want to completely control her, control the centre. I want to press her so she feels uncomfortable. No one's ever done that for to her before. Um, perfect scenario is the first round knockout, get those six points, put me in a position to make semi finals. Um, but any other plan is winning five. So for me, it's whatever it takes, come back with me. Um, I want to say from us, we wish you all the best. Um, there's been many underdog stories in throughout combat history. I mean, Matt Sarah GSP was a great one. No one expected Matt Sarah to be in many others. Recent, like recent times, and, and I think there's something about the underdog that everyone wants to look for and they go and, you know, back because no one expects you to win. Yeah. And, um, and I feel like that will almost give you a sense of freeness in that way. You don't have to worry about everyone. For sure. So everyone's worrying about you putting on a massive performance. Everyone's worrying about her. Yeah, absolutely. So, Thank you for the time as well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much.